Hey everyone, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker. Coming back with a high stakes hand history review where we get to see some of the best in the world battle it out against each other. We'll try to pick up some big picture ideas and, and nuanced ideas along the way as we, we study what these guys are doing. And as I always say, I know we haven't done one of these videos in a few weeks, but the big advantage in, in watching these elite played hands and understanding what's going on is that you're kind of leveling up your, your poker game. Like if you can understand the reasons for why the top players play as they do, you're in good shape, so to speak. So yeah, let's get started. This hand is played at 25, 50, 120 deep infant prodigy, which is a nick I'm not familiar with. We're going to assume reg for now. Why am I assuming reg? I won't say it randomly. There are four players at the table. One of them is not full stacked. So generally the non-full stacked player is assumed to be the recreational and he's probably not a huge recreational or the table would fill up. So that's going to be my assumption. An infant prodigy has been here for a while. He has almost 300 big blinds, so likely not a recreational but not a, a name I'm familiar with. So he raises, gets 3-bet and calls, and we have a BBB 3-bet pot, King King 9 2-tone, and Fent checks, Davy Jones bets roughly 1 quarter pot, a bit more, I think, and gets check raised and makes a call. And as always, as we're playing through a hand, we want to think about the ranges. So Davy Jones betting small means he's likely betting close to everything. Even if he is in practice not betting everything, he's going to be betting a bit of everything. Just the ratios are going to be a bit different, but a lot of players across stakes and for good reason simplify to betting everything and there isn't a great EV loss between betting everything and doing the, the accurate solver play of you know, betting 70-75% of your range or whatever. What about the check raising range? So what would you check raise on King King 9 two tone out of position? First hands that jump to mind should be draws. So those would be gut shots, flush draws. Of course we have value, which would be trips. And you get to have a few different hand types. This is something I, I discuss in my check raising course, but just to, to lay it out in, in half a minute. You know, since the pot size is only a little bit bigger, some hands enjoy that pot size, so maybe something like a, a pair of nines could check raise because this is an appropriate pot size, maybe something like a pair of sevens, where you get some protection, some thin value, and, and you kind of navigate your hand to a pot size that's appropriate for it, and you want some of those types of hands mixed in your range, and you can have some backdoor draws, like potentially 10-8 of spades, 7-8 of spades, ace something of spades. Maybe even something like ace-queen where you're drawing to an ace or a queen and you have some showdown. Like all, all sorts of hands might fit in there. I'm not saying they necessarily do. But each hand has its own rhyme and reason. So we get the turn deuce of diamonds, complete brick. On a brick generally, the check raiser has a bunch of hands that did not improve. So he has to slow down. In terms of dynamics, why does he have to slow down? So he could keep betting all his value range and all of his draws and if he were to do that his betting range would be too weak so he has to check some draws once you check some draws you want to check some value hands and this kind of creates this trickle slowdown effect on bricks be that as it may infant prodigy bets for half pot and we're assuming again probably trips and draws at this point not so much the, the backdoor stuff that didn't improve davy jones makes a call it's good to think what's a threshold, which hands are close or not. Of course, he's going to have all his flush draws. Gut shots probably get close and mixed on the turn. And then other than that, uh, you could have a 9. A 9 feels like it's probably close. And you could have pocket pairs. Pocket pairs, you know, Davies a 3 better, so aces, queens. Jacks tends to definitely call. If he has something like 8, 7, 6s, those would probably start mixing things up. And remember, if you have sevens here, the cool thing about sevens on a paired board is you're drawing to a boat that's a very disguised boat. So in a way, sevens has much nicer implied odds than having a nine, because if you have a nine and rivers a nine, you still lose to a king. 
if you have sevens and the river is a seven, you now beat a king and, and the king is stacking off against you. So, the, yeah, there, there's this deceptive effect on paired boards. But yeah, we get a river nine and very anti climatically infant prodigy checks and Davy Jones checks back. And we're going to see a showdown where infant prodigy shows five, seven of hearts. What do we think about that? Call a three bet seems fine. Check raise seems fine with a flush draw. Barrel with a flush draw, fine. Give up with a busted flush draw, definitely fine. Just 100% well played hand. Other than, you know, I'm not getting into sizing nuances. What about Davy Jones? Davy Jones shows up with Ace of Hearts, Queen of Clubs. So C bet is fine. Call the check raise is probably fine. You're C betting a lot. This hand is, is high enough up there. When you C bet small, had he C bet bigger and gotten check raised, this hand would probably have been a fault. Then on the turn, uh, peeling this hand versus half pot feels too loose to me. Again, we talked about which hands you have in your range after the check raise. So we're calling all the high pocket pairs. We're mixing the lower pocket pairs. We're maybe mixing 9x. We're mixing gut shots. We're calling all the flush draws. And then, you know, you have to have some folds. These are like your weakest types of, of floats. I would think this is probably either a very minor error or an exploit. Tough to know which one. And then, yeah, check back ace queen. Definitely no, no point in betting that. You're beating the give ups and you can't value bet. So to finish up, we're going to look in the solver and I'll try to do this at a pace. I've been told I sometimes do this a bit fast for some people who are less familiar. So we'll try to see if we can do it in a way that makes sense. So we have a quarter pot C bet with most hands, right? This reddish color, orangish color is, is the C betting hands. And check raising for out of position, you guys can see we can do it with trips, with gut shots, with flush draws, with some backdoor stuff like ace of hearts, 10, or queen of spades, seven of spades, 10 of spades, eight of spades. We said those hands maybe sometimes. Some of the lower pocket pairs, maybe ace nine, all the hand types that, that I mentioned pretty much. So we see the check raise. And position is definitely going to call a queen, and we're going to focus there. No, don't need to go into the full strategy, but of course, also calling pocket pairs and 9x and gut shots and flush draws. And we get the deuce of diamonds turn out of position, actually not slowing down terribly much. You know, 7 5 of hearts can slow down, it doesn't have to keep betting, but in this case, it does. I put only the half pot bet, this is not the GTO bet size, so if you put other bet sizes, it it's going to choose them, but I want to see what happens against this one. And you guys can see, first of all, Ace Queen is always folding, and it's like a one to one and a half big blind mistake to call. And if you look at the rest of the solution, you can see it's close to how I described. So, got shots now become zero EV and mixed. Flush draws are going to call 9x becomes zero EV and mixed. Whereas pocket pairs, like we said, are actually stronger than 9x, so you get to keep calling these. Very straightforward, and, and these ace-queen type hands are just the bottom of your range. You know, given the board is paired, they're just not good hands. So this would have to be either an exploit or a minor blunder. And it's important to say minor, because you might look at this from the, the side and say, oh, he made a, it's a pure fold, what a huge mistake. It's a, it's a tiny mistake, EV-wise, like, the hand has slightly worse properties than some of your other bluff catchers. Your frequencies are going to be off, but it's not like he called ace four off or like he called six five of, of diamonds. Those would be huge blunders. This is more of a tiny nuanced blunder and, and possibly done on purpose as an exploit given the size of the mistake. So we get the call, river nine of diamonds. Here, if you did get here with a busted flush draw, some of them shop and some give up. Now the general heuristic in poker is often to give up busted flush draws. That's the, the automatic heuristic and, and that's what Enfant went with here. But in this instance you can actually fire them sometimes for a river shop. Now there's always a reason. Like if you're going flush draws or gut shots and, and your opponent is mixed folding queens, jacks and tens and he doesn't have that many low flush draws that you're blocking with your low cards. 
like you, you can see it if, if you dive deep into the metrics, but these are not important things for your win rate. I think uh, whatever you bluff, if you give up the flush draws and fire the gut shots or the other way around, it's not going to have a big effect. And also King King 99 is a bit of a unique run out in that, like say you have Queen Jack, suddenly you check and, and show down sometimes and, and do okay against your opponents. Uh, your opponent is even showing down Jack high sometimes. But yeah, okay, hopefully that helps. I hope the, the solver was at a pace that's appropriate for everyone. If not, please let me know. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the hand and learned something. And uh, yeah, like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.